beard trimmer malfunction. But it's still me, and we're here today on Woodworking with Wes with a special project. We have been doing some videos on ceruzing a golden oak cabinet to redo your kitchen that way. And we've had several requests and comments on our uh, videos. Uh, could you do a cabinet that is in the house? Well, obviously we don't have the house, but we found a cabinet that just came out of one. We're going to go ahead and do the whole process just like it was in your house and show everything you have to do to give your kitchen that update. To get started, the first thing we did was take our doors off. We'll set those out of the way. We'll come back to those in just a minute. Let's concentrate on the cabinet itself. We cleaned it with some lacquer thinner to take off all the oils and greases. We just wiped it down really good and got it all cleaned off. Then comes the texturing part. Wire brush. You just go wire brush on the frames all the way around, across the crown mold, down around the bottom. Make sure that it's all wire brushed and textured up. You should have end panels that are oak also and match your face. We textured that also so that it was ready to go. We have that all done. Now we're ready to paint that. On our doors, we sanded the back side of our doors just slightly to smooth them up a little bit, clean off any of the, of the leftover residues from that. We wiped down the front of our door again with lacquer thinner and we've already wire brushed our door. We've gone across the top and the bottom and then down the long grains to straighten everything out and we've done all of this and it took about 10 to 15 minutes per door so it's kind of a time consuming process don't go cheap on this this is where your ceruzing finish your your wood grain really shows up this is the place to spend your time to make your kitchen really come out nice and we did we wanted to make sure that does, did look uh, looked good now, we're going to do this as though it was in your home, so we're going to do a paintbrush and roller finish all the way through. We'll start off by painting our cabinet. The back side of our doors is going to be painted just the base color. Then we're going to get everything done. We're getting ready to paint our cabinet, and we wanted to get a primer. Now, just took like a little background explanation. In my cabinet shop, when I spray paint, I use a spray-only product. This is going to be done in your house with a paint and roll, or a brush and roller, excuse me. And so we went to our Sherwin Williams dealer and we asked for a primer uh, that would allow us to use our paintbrush and roller instead of a spray finish. This is what they gave us: wall and wood primer. We had it tinted to a color that we had previously picked out, and we're going to put this on with the paint and roller. Now we want to talk a little bit about the end panel over here. Um, we have found in our, in our comments that people don't always have end panels that match the wood face on their cabinets. If you don't, find some, uh, get a veneer, a uh, thin veneer product. You can glue it on. You can nail it on if you have a small little pin nailer or anything like that. But it can be attached on this side. Um, they make a little spray adhesive, a contact cement that you can buy at your local hardware store. If you tape this off and clean it, that works really well to put it on with a contact cement. Got to be careful not to get it all over the place, but it would be a way, good way to put it on if you want to. Again, like we say, we've attached the crown so that we're ready to go here on our cabinet. Paint is next. Like I said, we're using just a little foam roller, nylon brush that was recommended to us by Sherwin-Williams. We're going to start off with the end panel here. I'm going to bring this out to the end of my cardboard here so I can get a roller on there. And we're just going to Now we found when we did our other video on paint brush and roller that the primer takes two coats, but let's see how we do on this one. Like you would be doing this in your own home, like I say. Let's just Act like we're doing this in our own home so that you can get a real feel of how this would all work. Okay, paintbrush. Yeah, 
If this was in your home and up against the ceiling, you'd want to put some tape against the ceiling so you're not getting paint everywhere. I'm lucky I've been doing it here in the shop so I don't have to worry about that, but obviously when you're in your house you have a little more care that you have to do with your borders make sure that you're not spreading stuff all over the place on your walls where you don't want it and just keeping it on your cabinets where you do want it. Okay, we're going to straighten out our paint here a little bit with the brush, but you can see how we're not covered like we need to be yet. This is going to be a two coat application with our primer in order to get the finish that we want on our cabinet. Let's move around to the front side here. We'll start up here with the crown and work our way down. going to say something here that is kind of a, a if, if you want to type thing. If you don't have a crown mold on your kitchen and it goes up against the ceiling, you can see that I added a piece and you could do the same thing. You could add a molding, you could add a cabinet if you wanted to, you could change a few things and everything that you do will eventually be covered with your paint. And so you don't have to just go with what you've got. You could make it a little different, a little nicer, a little more updated if you so desire. And when your painting is done, it all matches. So keep that in mind in your remodel project. You can be a little creative, not only with your paint and your finishes, but with the whole project start to finish. Now, the inside of your face frame, this is a face frame, styles and rails. The inside of your face frame, you'll want to paint that also so that none of the old golden oak shows even when you open the door. So, let's get up here and a little paint on there. Get down here where my glasses show me what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm painting in the blind. I'm going to keep painting, but we'll come back as soon as I got this all done.
Okay, we've got our first coat of primer on everything. We just finished putting the primer on the door. We've got to wait for it to dry. We're going to give everything a soft sand and give a second coat of primer. We'll see you then. We've painted our door, the first coat of primer. I've gone back and sanded. You can see where we've sanded it and why it needs another coat of primer. We see too much of the golden oak still sticking through. I'm going to demonstrate the difference just by flipping it over. We're done painting the back side of our door, both coats of primer, and you can see what a nice cream color that is and how ready are. We haven't put the top coat on it yet, but that's the finished paint on there. And we're going to give it another coat of primer on this and get ready for the glaze. Let's start there. If you were looking for kind of an antiquing effect, you could almost leave the door right where it is and let that worn antiquing look come through. That's not what we're going for, so let's not get carried away there, but our glazing effect that we're going to do is going to be highlighting the grain where the antiquing doesn't necessarily do just that. But Let's complete with our second coat of primer so that we can get that all taken care of. Okay, we just completed putting our second coat of primer on. You notice that I used the brush, went over the whole thing with the brush. That's so we could brush the paint down into the grain that we wire brushed out, but to not leave any additional paint in there so that we fill it up and don't have room for our glaze to hold in the grain. I think we're about ready now. We're going to let this dry, give it a sand, and then we're ready for glaze. We have given our cabinet a second coat of primer just like we did our door and we're now ready to glaze. We have sanded it, made sure that our grain was exposed so that we can hold the glaze and stuff. We did our end panel. I did one little trick. I'm just going to talk about it a little bit. Our end panel was just a plywood panel, so a veneer, and it had a very thin layer of veneer. And so when we put our paint on with our roller, even though we had ceruzed it, scratched it with our wire brush, it didn't do very well. So after I put the second coat of primer on, I just took my wire brush very lightly 
and just hit the grain spots so that we can hold a little more glaze. I don't know if it's going to work. We're going to give it a try. But we're going to use a brown glaze, ML Campbell. We're just going to do a light, a light brown glaze on it. And this is going to give it kind of a cream color with a brown glaze. This is a color request that we had have, had off of our comments. Let's see how it looks. I like to put my glaze on with a little brush. Um, there are, you can put it on with a, with a staining sponge or however you want to do it, wipe it on. But I like to use a little brush. One of the reasons I like to use a brush, especially when I'm glazing something like this, is I can work it down into the grooves so that my ceruzing shows up. Let's start here on our crown and work our way down. And you want to make sure you get plenty of glaze on, or at least that's the way I do it, to get plenty of glaze on there because what I'm trying to do is get down into the grain that I highlighted with my wire brush and I don't want to lose that grain by not having enough glaze down in there to make it show up. Now we take our, and I do a little section at a time, work my way down so that I can. This is an oil-based glaze. Our, our paint was a water base. Our top coat is also going to be a water base, but our glaze is an oil base. The reason I like oil based glaze is it doesn't dry quite as fast, surprisingly enough. It doesn't dry as fast as the water based glaze, and it gives me a little more time to work it. You can see our grain is already starting to show up like we want. Let's just go ahead and finish glazing our end panel here. Move it out here a little square to the light. And just start working down the panel. Now, like I say, I'm kind of curious how this is going to turn out on this end panel because it's a veneered end panel and we really kind of worked hard with our wire brush to make sure that the grain showed up. It was not a piece of veneer that had a lot of grain to begin with and we wanted to make sure that what was there really showed up. But it's just kind of been a difficult piece to work with. You might have that same issue when you're doing cabinets in your home on a piece of veneer. Let's just see how we ended up. I'm not going to wipe it any more than that because we want the grain to show up as much as possible. We're going to show you how a, a little bit later when it dries, we're going to show you how we going to highlight that grain without taking any more glaze off. Let's put a little bit more glaze in the grain there. I'm trying to preserve as much grain as I graining as I can. So we want to treat that a little differently than we would anything that had a solid wood where the grain was deeper for our wire brush to highlight. Like I say, I have a, a plan on how we're going to preserve that graining, even though our, our veneer is very thin. So, st 
stick around toward the end of the video, we're going to show you how that works. Right now we're just going to take off the excess and leave as much as possible to hold in the grain and even go back and kind of give our grain just a little help here. This is a hard piece to kind of maintain any real ceruzing effect because we just don't have the depth of material that solid wood has in a veneer. That is just the nature of the beast. We'll see if we can tame the beast, make that grain show up a little better. We're going to leave it just like this, come back and we're going to show you how we're going to fix that. Hopefully, anyway. Let's, let's put it that way. We, hopefully, we know how we're going to fix that. Let's go around here and work the front side of our cabinet now. I'm going to get over here so I can paint right-handed, which I am. Oh, i got to have my glaze here so I can deal with it. We're going to do just like we did on the side. We're going to start up and work down. painting, be sure to cover your floor and your appliances and everything that you don't want to have covered with paint splatters. Get yourself some drop cloths and try to keep your workplace as clean and corralled off or, or bordered off as much as possible so that you don't make a mess. I'm lucky to be working in the paint shop here. I will tell you, I'm not a professional paintbrush guy. I mentioned that in one of our other videos. I spray my cabinets in the paint shop and I'm really good with a spray gun. I can do a beautiful finish with a spray gun. But if you want to have an amateur paintbrush finish, I'm your guy. And if you're not a professional painter, and you can see how it works out just like I am because we're all in the same boat. Okay, we'll continue to paint. I'm just wiping my paper or wiping my glaze off with a paper towel. I use that for my stain and my glaze. It's just so nice to use a clean paper towel and mop up the glaze. Got to have a good quality paper towel though. I won't profess to sponsor any brand names, but I use Bounty. Anyway, let me go ahead and finish this. We'll come back when I'm done. We have our cabinet uh, glazed now. We're getting ready to glaze the door. I wanted to point out one thing. <clears throat> In our original video, I sanded the door after I had put the primer on but I sanded so hard that I 
brought this edge back down to the original golden oak. When I sanded this one, the same thing happened. You have to be careful. I went back and did a little touch up before we got to this point and retouched up my sand so that I can make sure I don't have that raw edge wood showing, that golden oak edge showing through. Uh, something to keep in mind, the mistake I made the first time that I corrected this time. But let's go ahead. I'm just going to go through and glaze this door and then we're going to be ready to move on. Like I say, I always start with the edges first. And we'll just work around this real quick so you don't have to watch every last brush stroke. But we're just going to get our door all glazed up. I gotta put my glasses on, I can't see. Oh, look at that. Glazing is kind of messy, but it's fun. I love to slop the paint on there, have a good time, enjoy yourself. This is a fun process actually, to make your old golden oak door come to life with a new color. It's a fun thing to do, so enjoy it. Do the face of the frame of the door. Start to see the grain come out in your door. This is going to be so nice. Okay, now the face of the panel. This door is called a cathedral arch door. Um, when it has the little pointy type arch, that's a cathedral arch door. There are lots of different styles of door and a scoop. This is a scoop panel. A little trivia there to go on. This is a scoop panel on a cathedral arch door. When I talk about the scoop, that's just the profile of the edge of the panel. see as we the more glaze we take off the more grain we highlight but we don't want to take it off all just yet that's the final process so stick around and see how we do the final process that really highlights the glaze 
If you've not seen how I do this, you'll be amazed how that grain pops out at the very end. Okay, we've got our door glazed. We've got to let it sit and dry. Then we're going to sand our cabinet. That's the extra step that I'm talking about. I'll show you. We're getting ready to sand the cabinet. Now, we put the paint on, we sanded, then we glazed. Now we're going to go back and we're going to hit the sand, our glaze with the sand, take off kind of a surface a layer of that glaze except for down the grain. Now I started up here just in a little piece so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see when we put the glaze on it covers everything. We go back, we take a soft sanding sponge, and we sand and it takes that little film of glaze off and lets that grain really show through. Now I have two different kinds of sponges. They're both just medium or, or fine grade sanding sponges. This is a little softer so it works better in the profiles. This is a little harder and it's going to work on this uh, end panel. Now the end panel, remember we talked about the end panel being a veneer, having a very thin veneer. We were kind of worried about whether or not our uh, glaze would show up and show our highlight our grain. Well, we're going to find out right now because this is we're going to use this sponge. We're going to try to take off the surface layer, this film on the glaze, and see if we can highlight the glaze, I, uh, the grain. I started right here, and I think we're going to be okay. But let's see what we end up with. I think it's going to work. You can see how our grain, now it's not got a very distinct grain, not like, like the real tight grain of a piece of solid wood. This is just like I say a veneer. But you can see our grain is starting to be highlighted as we take off that outer layer of glaze. We're going to have to work this panel for a little bit and make sure we get the kind of look that we want and it'll be a little more difficult than your hardwoods. Let's just step over to the hardwoods here right next to it. You can see how as we sand the hardwood piece, this is the edge of the face frame, you can see how our grain shows up really good very easily but we don't have that same opportunity here and so we just have to do a little more work. Anyway, we're going to go through, we're going to sand the face frame all the way around, the crown mold, just like we've done this piece, just like we've done on the edge here. We're going to come back after that and show you how it all looks at the end before we put the top coat on. We have our cabinets, the glaze layer, sanded now so that we've highlighted our grain with our glaze. You can see how the grain really stands out now. Our end panel came out pretty good based upon the wood that we had to work with. It didn't do too bad, but it has a nice uh, grain look to it, as much grain as we had. And we're getting ready now to go back to our doors, get our doors finished off. But you can already see how this really changes there's no golden oak look to this cabinet anymore at all. There's no yellow oak at all. So this really will change the look of your, of your cabinet job, uh, your project, your kitchen, whatever. We have 
uh, finished glazing our door and it's dry now, we're going to take our sanding sponge and sand the glaze film off of our paint so that we highlight the grain just like we did on the cabinet. And we're going to work around it just like this. We're going to use this soft sponge for the profiles and we're going to use our whoop, we're going to use our little heavier sponge for the flat spots. And you can begin to see what we're going to do. But anyway, let's go ahead and sand the whole door, see what we end up with. You can begin to see as we take this outer layer of glaze off and sand down to the paint on the high profiles of the grain, how we enhance that oak grain. You can really see that now. We're not done sanding. We still have quite a bit more to do in order to bring it all down nice and even. But you can begin to see how the grain stands out and how we haven't lost the beauty of oak. We've only changed the color. I'll come back when we're all done sanding. Okay, doesn't that make a good looking door? We're going to get ready to top coat now. We've got our door all sanded. We just have to blow some of the dust off and put some top coat on it. This is going to be a great looking door. Let's do that. You can see now that we have our color on, our glaze on, and we have uh, sanded the finish to highlight the grain. We're getting ready to put our top coat on now. I, uh, I have just a clean soft bristle brush here. We're going to brush this down and then just take a moist cloth and just wipe it and take off the dust so we're ready for our top coat. That's all we're going to do to get ready for our top coat. Let's top coat. For our top coat, we're just going to use Minwax polyurethane. This is a spar urethane, but it's a water-based polyurethane. And we're going to put it on with our nylon brush. But let's just go ahead and put our top coat on our door and on our cabinet and come back and see what it looks like.
Okay, according to our instructions on the can of our polyurethane, we need to let this dry two hours, give it a sand to uh, clean up the finish a little bit, and then put on a second coat, and we'll be done. We'll do the same to our cabinet now. We have given our uh, cabinet a first coat of polyurethane. I set it up here so you could see the progress that we're making. Here is our original door that has just been wire brushed and ready to go for the paint. We've painted, we've sanded, we've put on our first coat of polyurethane. We're gonna go back and sand our second coat of polyurethane with just a soft sanding brush. We do that just to smooth out the, the polyurethane a little bit and rough it up so that the second coat goes on very nice. We'll do the same thing over our whole cabinet, but we're gonna go ahead and get this all finished off. We're gonna paint this door and get everything done. We're gonna put hinges on it and handles on it, and I want you to stick around and come back and see what this cabinet would look like all done in your house. Okay, we're back today. The upper cabinet that we did is all complete. We put the doors on put hardware on and got our hinges mounted, everything's complete. This is exactly what it would look like in your home if you were doing this cabinet. Crown's done, cabinet's done, door's done, everything like that, but it was an old golden oak cabinet and it looks totally different. This is a great project that you could do in your own kitchen. If you have a golden oak kitchen that's still in great shape, you just are tired of that golden color and you want to give it something else, this is a great thing to do to ceruse a finish on it. Now, like I say, we've gone a light color with a darker glaze in order to highlight the grain. Color choice is yours. Keep that in mind when you think about your project. You could add some crown. You could do all kinds of things to change your kitchen a little bit and then put a color on that would really be nice. Change your kitchen. Be a wonderful thing. Or cabinets anywhere in your home. Laundry, bath. Be a great thing to do. Anyway, I'm glad you joined us in this project. It's been fun, not been very hard. Project you could do yourself. And we'll see you next time on Woodworking with Wes.